balance upon which all life consists. And it is your good pleasure to call us into your presence that we might be numbered in you. This is a great privilege that we do not consider as a light thing. It is written that there is a part which no fowl knoweth. The vulture's eyes have not seen. The lion's webs have not trodden it. And the fierce lions have not passed by it. Guide us with your hand today as you show unto us the path of life in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we have always asked, we ask one more time, let the least among us become as strong as David. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated in the house of God. You know, we have come open air. We are just open to the heavens. You know, once in a while we need to come come out. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. God has taken us for two years and now he wants to take us beyond. So we are seeking to connect with the spiritual provision that will guarantee that our journey into his purpose is a consistent and a sustainable one. Turn your Bible with me to the book of First Kings. We'll begin our journey from verse 19. I want to do a Bible study for maybe the next 45 minutes and then we'll begin to pray. Amen. Now, I don't know if it has bothered you before. Somebody like Saul was called of God and anointed. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you still here? Yes. Now, somebody like Saul was called of God and anointed. But during his lifetime, the anointing became corrupted. Has it bothered you before? That somebody began a spiritual journey, but he could not complete that journey, even though there were spiritual resources made available to guarantee that the journey was well provided for. Amen. Everything in our nation right now speaks about depravity. Backwardness, retrogression. Don't you think we need something much more than that which we have been sustained, surviving on? The refineries that we use in this country were built with ancient technology. Every refinery has a, a kind of configuration. All right. Old refineries can only produce at the best 28% of petrol. When crude oil is fed into it, it will produce 28% of petrol to produce a higher per percentage of kerosene and then a much more higher percentage of diesel. That's the configuration that we use. And I hope you know that we consume more petrol than it takes six months to construct a refinery that has the best configuration template that can produce 47% of petrol. If we have two of such refineries in this country, our national consumption will be fully met. The Chinese can build it in six months. Now, I'm, see, are you with me? Yeah. In six months, it can be built. And all the queues that you entered before you failed will not exist. During the government of Obasanjo, all the technocrats had to be summoned. People like Charles Soludo, Nasiru Erofai, Okonjo Ewela. Hallelujah. Only for us to discover 
eight years later that Nigerians' problem, the problem of Nigeria is not in the books, it's spiritual. Now, I pray God will plant something inside of you. Because it is God's will to use men to facilitate his agenda. But in order for God to use you, you and him must be operating on the same page. He must have brought you to a point where you have decided to adopt his policy, his principle, and his perspective. God cannot use anybody that has not yet aligned with his operation modality. Hallelujah. The hope of our future lies with men that have decided to adopt God's perspective. Just like we said during the conference, I think on the second day of the conference, we need anointed people in government. We need people that know God in the police. Because our nation's problems are not are not intellectual problems, they are spiritual problems. You might get go to the altar and get married. But you see, somebody maybe in that family can stir up spiritual fume that will affect that union. You might think that it's because you have not read enough marriage books. So you consult Tim Lahaye when he spoke about temperament. All right? That this kind of temperament cannot mingle with that kind of temperament. So maybe you begin to look at yourself from the perspective of psychology. That is because of a psychological imbalance that your marriage cannot work. Meanwhile, there's, there's a spiritual threat. And a pattern has been created that nobody in this kind of family can have a sustainable marriage. The problems of our nation has defied every solution. To transport one liter of petrol for five meters hmm? through pipeline is five naira. By train is 15 naira. By waterways is 21 naira. By truck is 27 naira. In all the nations where we have petroleum products, we know that every nation that has petroleum products has a problem because of that resource. And the problems are variable. But in Nigeria, we have a peculiar one. There's no other nation where we have pipeline vandalism as a problem. Because if you are going to vandalize a pipeline, you must be an engineer that is not just first degree. Are you, are you following that? You must be like, you must have had a master's degree in pipeline engineering and you must have attended international courses for you to be able to vandalize pipeline. A market woman cannot do it. Oh, sorry, that's my, I, now I'm, come, I'm speaking more of my, I'm just trying to open your eyes. Uh, maybe you are in 400 level. Now, in the university, that thing you are studying cannot save you, even your family. But I will encourage you to study it anyway. Mm, it, might have, it, might, it might be the requirement for you to, to have access to a platform. And on that platform, we need a spiritual man there to create an atmosphere where God's blessings can begin to permeate the land. In the pricing template of what translates to petroleum, the petroleum price that you buy, one of the reasons why it, is, it cannot be sustainable at this level is because of our transport system. We are using the highest transport option. And to vandalize that pipeline, I said you need a technocrat to do it, a white man. You need somebody that has schooled outside, that understands pipeline technology. You can't use an axe to compromise a pipeline, for God's sake. A pipeline has a lifespan of 30 years. All our pipelines are expired. But yet, you cannot compromise it. 
you need a technocrat to do that. The mystery is this. When they start pumping from a jibo, it takes 30 minutes for the man in the pump room to identify that there is vandalism. 30 minutes to... <laughs> Our problem runs deep into the soul of man. It's a product of a spiritual cause. And there are many factors that fight to gain mastery of the soul of our nation. You are all witnesses that when uh, election is about to take place, the roads to the villages that are not tarred, that are that are we, that we don't even consider them roads anymore because they have even it is not even suitable for the alignment of the shoe. Talk more of of a vehicle. Those roads become lucrative parts because the politician understands that rulership is a game of power. Many authors and spirits are brought into active participation. And then you begin to wonder why the land cannot advance. If the recovery must begin, it must begin with you and with me. And there's an orientation that we must sustain if we will reach the promised land. Hallelujah. I pray the Lord will help us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Our problem is spiritual. David handed over a pure heritage to his son Solomon. And when Solomon came upon the throne, because of the wisdom that he had, there was no need for him to fight. If you want to fight him, you'll, go, you'll marry your first daughter. <laughs> you'll marry your first daughter. And you will not have any need to fight with your in-law. But the only thing he did not know was that every woman that he married from every nation brought his gods to the land. Sometimes some of the women can come to me and say, Ah, Solomon, I want to go and worship my gods. Ah, go, you will go. What? No, he said, today follow me. And then he said, if you love me, follow me. Okay. He said, sorry, this God, when we worship him, we, we go naked. So in order for him to please his wife, he had to be naked. And then he dance before. He never knew that what his acts was producing in the land were potholes. And the full impact of the potholes that his compromise created did not take effect during the time of his rulership. The wisdom was still working. And then when his son came to take over, we saw that beyond reason, there was something pushing him beyond normal, natural, human reason. The ancient people came and told him, see, because Solomon in his wisdom, the way he organized his administration was such that since there were 12 tribes of Israel and they happened to be 12, tribe, 12 months in a year. Alright? So, one tribe would take care of the sustenance of his palace for one month. And it runs like that all through the tribes. By the time the tribe takes care of the palace for one month, the tribe will hit a recession there will be an economic meltdown <laughs> in that tribe that the 12 months will not be able to he will not recover his economic ground in 12 months do you understand that now go and count how many chickens they slaughter in Solomon's palace per day alright so the ancients now came and said see our problem is not a spiritual one it's an economic one. Just reduce the burden. Everybody will be happy. It, you know, if there's an economic, economic situations are so practical that you don't need a binoculars to articulate their presence. Very practical. So they gave him a very cogent counsel. But it happens to be that because of the influence operating the territory that his father, the, the potholes. 
his reasoning was distorted. And he felt that his name would not go well into history except he does something significant. So he went for another level of counsel. So his guys now told him that, see, when they are writing the name of kings in this land, your name will be omitted. The way to create relevance is that tell the people that your father, hmm, he did this much, but me, I will do better. But you see, the, in, the impact of the error of Solomon took place in another generation. It was when the guy made that declaration that Israel fragmented as a nation. If you think that the path and the way Benway State is going now, you can trace it from today. It's not true. It dates back to several things that were done long time. And our problems are now so practical that we need a real solution. The real solution will hit the foundation and the source of the problem. If God doesn't go far with you, let's never expect that our land, our nation will ever change. Hallelujah. That's why we need spiritual men, pastors, playing governmental roles so that the principles of God can be brought into the corridors of power. That is the only way that a nation can be exalted. The Bible said what? Righteousness exalts. So the template of a blessed nation is that it must sustain the principles of the kingdom of heaven. There must be a reflection of that kind of governmental order that finds expression in the heavens. That's why scripture says to us, Thy throne, O God, is forever. The reason why there's no throne that has ever existed in the earth realm that has the capacity to last forever. No throne. But God's throne lasts forever. And there's a reason for that. Because the scepter of his kingdom is what? It's a right scepter. There are principles upon which the throne is established that gives it the capacity to continue without being challenged. Until the same principles find expression in the earth, we will be running from pillar to post. We will be a seasonal kind of nation. Are you still with me? In Nigeria, we are rich but not wealthy. I hope you know the difference. We are not productive. We take oil from the ground, sell it. We get the money. Alright? Then we now say, because our refineries are not working, you go and import fuel. I will pay you for importing it. The same money we used to sell, we use the, what we gained to subsidize something that is part of a component, a little fraction of that which we sold out. It's never done anywhere. That's a retrogressive template and that kind of formula is established in a nation where some other forces have entered into the game other than Jehovah. Potholes. In the system. If we are going to recover the system. It's not the work of a te technocrat. It's a work of a prophet. That has enough stature. To establish the principles. That sustains God's throne. So that the same environment. Can find expression. In our territory. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you have not. Worked with God enough. Just like if you don't know God. You cannot be a good husband. Are you with me? Now, it is that which God has built into you by dealing with you and taking from you the inclination and capacity of lawlessness in his work, in his work in you, that will determine how you can relate. The principles established inside will determine the principles with which you can run outside. So if the kingdom of God has a place, a footing, a seat inside of you, you can be used as a conduit pipe and as an ambassador to establish the same principles in any system you find yourself. 
So, if we see that a nation runs highest on the corruption chart, it means that we Christians are corrupt people. Because the Bible reveals to us in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, that society is a mirror image of what happens in the church. Not in the mocks. Our society re re reveals that our Christianity is abnormal and subnormal. I hope you know the day that Abacha rose and the, you know the church prayed, Abacha died. Because the church now assumed a different image from that which was going on in society. It, that which was going on in society could not sustain. Do you understand it? And the pioneer, the apostle of that movement had to die. In order for the society to take the mirror image, to sustain the image of that which was built in the church. And that's why what we are talking about now is that we are not just seeking another great man to rise. The responsibility of the deliverance of our land and our nation is, is on the shoulders of a generation. It means that a generation must have to receive a different philosophy. And God must have to run deep into their veins. I just said that to welcome you. He said, but I slept. that's what I woke up with. So I welcome you with that in Jesus' name. Amen. First Kings chapter 19. Listen to me, a day is coming. A day of change is coming. Africa, Amen. see, listen, listen, listen. Listen to me. When Moses was called, God sent him to Pharaoh. Sent him with a strange kind of message. He told Pharaoh, he said, Israel is what? Is my firstborn son. That was where we discovered that God beholds nations like sons. Okay? So he was talking about a corporate persona. A nation. And from God's perspective, Israel was his firstborn son. Are you here? He didn't say Israel is his only son. He said Israel is what? You are not, you are not here. He said Israel is my firstborn. If you don't release my firstborn, I will kill your firstborn. You know what is tied in that revelation? It means that the way God dealt with Israel... Because there were a nation that did not have a security system, no religious system, no military, no government, no nothing. And out of ambiguity, out of, 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 of nothing, God forged a nation. The way God brought deliverance to them and forged them as a nation is actually the template of national transformation for other nations that are God's sons too it's not only israel that is called other nations too are called and just like you have a purpose nations have purposes in god and let me give you an idea nigeria is the first born of africa if nigeria never fulfills her destiny africa's potential will never be realized that is why god is so particular god can kill people on the throne how many african countries have had presidents die on the throne like this one. The true potential of Africa can never be realized until Nigeria finds a place and begins to fulfill a prophetic destiny. And if I should tell you the reading on the calendar, this is Africa's time of focus. I don't know if you have been to Europe lately, traveled, if you do some traveling, London, Scotland, the gospel came from the white people. Okay? But if you go to their land today, you will not see the gospel anymore. And one of the reasons why God allowed us to be backward in development 
is so that we can know the true God. Because our corporate purpose as a continent is to restore the heritage of God that is being lost in our land. You might read civil engineering, but I assure you, and, and uh, all kinds of engineering, but there's no time in the history of humanity where we will match the white man with technology. Because God gave every nation something. We must learn technology from them and call them to help us. But it is obvious that our assignment is to take the truth of God's reality to the ends of the world. And that's why Nigeria is the apostolic face of Africa. There are some new things that God is going to birth in this nation that are going to be exported. And some of the dealings God is taking some of us through, it is because he wants to use us as prototypes to the nations. Are you, are you, are you with me? Okay, my parables are becoming many. Let, let's just go to the Bible. I woke up with this burden. I'm just... I woke up with it. So God's purpose must work here. And you and me are going to be the people through which this purpose will find a footing and an expression. But you see, we cannot start if we don't start right. Your relationship with God must be checked. Must be sorted out. According to the New Testament, you are not a man if you have never heard God's voice in your ears before. You are a creature. So we have had creatures in places of influence. We have had creatures in places of power. The Bible said that a man held in honor and knoweth not is like a beast that perish. So when you take a beast and put him somewhere, what do you expect? God give you understanding. I told you that my colleague ran to the office on Sunday to pick something he forgot on Friday. And when he got there, I'm talking about our headquarters, not we that are on the field in the bush. The headquarters. The glass building. That glass building. There were 12 herbalists there doing incantation. I thought we are all modern, civilized people that did master's degree. <laughs> The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The entire platform needs to be delivered. We need a new breed without greed that will bring in a different policy, principle, perspective. Men that are strong in character, that are ready to live a normal life so that their own lives can prophesy, can set an example, set a precedence. So that if anybody wants to Become serious and he wants to do something significant. He will use that man's life as a reference point. Those are the kind of people that we need. Christianity that is deeply seated and is revealed through principles in character that are founded in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You know, I asked a question the other day. Have you seen 10 million equivalent in dollars? It's not big. It's small. It's easy for me to make that. Very easy. But if I make it, people like all of this Otupo, hmm, it will affect, it can affect the whole of Otupo. And if you say you will not make it, you will not run the deal. Somebody will lose one point, uh, three point something billion. So he will look for your wife. So I had to take my wife and children. I said, you stay in Makodi. Let me remain in the war front. I found out more and more that the terrain of civil service is spiritual. You need to know how to fight in the night. To, to, to stay on the seat for long. If not, there are some seats you will sit down. You you stand up paralyzed after one week. They'll be using something to. (laughs) 
So it is time for us to know our God. And not to play church. That fake one, fake stuff that people do around. Just carry the name that they are Christians. Don't, you don't need that. Remain in the shrine. Know that devote yourself to something and be strong in it. The days in which we have come are strange times. We can only ask God to give us wisdom. As I speak, you need to evaluate your life quickly. I like people that are truthful. We preach to a young lady. She says, no, I'm not ready yet. When I'm ready, I'll come back. And we had to salute her. She actually came back years later. That I'm ready now. But she came back with HIV. Uh, but at least she's ready. She was not ready and she was... She, she said it. I'm not... No. I understand this. I've been hearing this thing for a long time. But when I'm ready, I'll come back. Two years later, she came back like a shadow. Say, I am ready now. Are you ready? Or you want to do business as usual? In Lagos now, if you say you are a pastor, you are a suspect. So, we don't bear pastor title in Lagos. In fact, we are called civil servant in Lagos. Don't come to Lagos and say, Pastor, one pastor, Arame. You will not see him. He's not there. Because if you say you are a pastor, you are a suspect. Now, if the church is that fake, what do you expect from society? Don't blame any leader. They are very good at They are trying. What are you talking? They are trying. We will have to set the lead. God will not have anybody to judge except there is a righteous man. He can't, that is his way. He will not be justified if he unleashes judgment if there is no righteous man in the land. Lot gave God the opportunity to judge Sodom that it was possible for somebody to remain in Sodom and not be of Sodom. So, judgment could be meted out because there was a man that was sustaining a different principle, a different perspective. Is your life strong enough to make God fulfill his will in a place? Can you become that reference point that will facilitate the intention of God and say, because this thing is happening, now I have a legal ground to bring my judgment into the territory. There can be no judgment except there is a righteous man in the system that has refused to bow himself to the image of the God that has been raised before the eyes of the people. In order for you to be that kind of man like Daniel. You must know how to open your window to the east. And to bow your, yourself three times in a day. You must have a God zone. Where you tap into the resources of heaven. You need a lot of stature to be a Christian on the field. It's easy to be a, a, a pastor. Easy to be. Most of your life is hidden. We don't even know you. But you cannot be a public figure and be hidden. The day you lose your temper, now we have all these phones uh, that can record. As you are losing your temper, somebody is filming. See, so see. <laughs> In Lagos, uh, when there is an accident, the person just comes. He doesn't fight. He takes his phone and he's, he's filming it. Because everybody is a lawyer in Lagos. He's filming. Because uh, when he finished, he won't talk to the person. Just go to the, the police or see the alignment. This is showing you that I was coming like this. <laughs> but when you are working as a public figure in the depot here, I worked for four years in the depot here. Even the Muslim, Muslim say, this one is a man of God. Not because I came there as a pastor. I came there as a man. And then they told me that the corruption there is older than me. It's one year older. It started one year before I was born. So you are too small, your type, to stop it. Meanwhile, I was given a stamp from the presidency. And those four stamps must be on every document before trucks 
go out. Now, this is what they do because uh, Nigerian government pays for transportation costs. What the, what the guy spends trucking the product from Lagos to Makode. Nigeria say, we'll pay for it. So the guy goes to Lagos. Then goes to a depot. Say, print documents for me. That is all the documents that are printed to show that you are transporting a product. Alright? So they print 120 for him. Are you with me now? Then the government officials in that depot, they don't go and say, see, we want to do business. If you stamp one, we give you 10,000. 120 times 10 is 1.2 million. That's, he makes that almost every Friday. So the government guy now stamps. That's from Lagos. That means we dispatch this product. No truck. He now comes to the depot here and says, this is the receiving. So the government guy is near and needs to stamp that we have received. If you stamp here too, how much? 10K for. Ah, you didn't leave your seat. In fact, they will pay credit it yesterday before they bring it today. And in November, you make 5 million. December, because there's scarcity. You don't need to be too intelligent to make that money. Then I came there and said, see, this one, we can't do it. They say, you are too small. And go and find out people that try this in this depot. None of them is alive now. Say, ah, the government pays me well. So this one is out of the game. They just say, well, we know you can't do it. Then the first week, they sent the documents around. The team, I returned them back without the signature. See? We have easier ways to solve this problem. Went and brought a malam from Niger. That's a civilized way to solve it. The guy can paralysis in his back. Doctor might say there are symptoms to detect paralysis. I have a different view. Paralysis can be carried in the bag too. <laughs> might say tetoscope. Let's use the thing to check the rate. Not rate. No, it's not rate. He had it in the bag. Then he will come early in the morning with his bag. And then he will greet you. He will check it for seven days and come back again. <laughs> we kept doing that for for four months. Then in the fourth month, he became Then after eight months, the man himself became paralyzed. That man kills people only on Thursday and 4 p.m. You know, we close by 4 p.m. As we are trying to close, you don't hear, hey, somebody has gone. But you'll be paralyzed first. Then they'll rush the person to the hospital. That's the undoing. As you are reaching the hospital and they inject... When the man himself became paralyzed, that's when the news leaked out. Because the man came with his paralysis. They, they drove him. Come on. And say, Lafia Zaki. He called me the lion of the devil. That's where that corruption stopped. And for that time, there was four here. They opposed me. That's why you're you are having queue. Went to Lagos, it was worse, so I had to move there. Say, see, let's plan. Hmm? You go, stay there. If we are at 100 like that, Nigeria will be free. Amen. Now, so you know what the Christianity we profess is mouth, it's not real, it's fake. Because you hear the name Abraham, but he is the one that organizes all the people so that they can stamp. He will pull his shoe, Seth. He will be stepping on. <laughs> it must go deeper. 
Allow God to overtake your life so that a change can come into the land. Hallelujah. Amen. After that man became paralyzed, the man left me. He said, this one will all die, so leave him. We will die. If you, you know, this. So even though they don't like me, they'll drive and pass my office door and say, you know, the man is greeting, greeting like, but he's frowning. The Lord will help us in Jesus' mind. Our Christianity must renew our nation. And it must be deep enough. We need men of sufficient stature that will not only stand behind the pulpit, but when you put them on display and try their reins, you will find that there is no aspect of their existence that you can exploit for something that is not of God. Those are the kind of men that can change society. The prince of this world cometh. He found nothing in me. Hallelujah. Amen. I give you a scripture, then we'll pray. Because I can no longer read my first Kings 19. So let's go to Matthew 6. Just one scripture, we'll pray together. Matthew chapter 6. You know, those days in this depot, I didn't have a car. Because I sold my car so that we could buy that land. So I used to come with bus. Then I sent one Igbo man. From, he's the in charge of AP. AP. Say, do you have a car? I said, no. I come, you, you come with bus. Hi. Boss, hey, can we arrange how you can have a car in the next two months? Okay, let's put it another way. What kind of car do you want? <laughs> he said that it came to him that God spoke to him, that's why he came. That there's a way they make money here. So he believed God spoke to him. That I don't know. This is the way. One truck contains 33,000 liters. He said, Write it. What is the pump price? 97. Write it. But then it was 65. Okay. If you add one error to 65, how much is that? 66. That one era times that three thousand is how much? Thirty three thousand. How much are they selling in Bullock? Prime power. Okay. If they are selling ninety in prime power and the cost price is sixty five, move it to seventy. Calculate five times. You see. What car do you want? That was his, his message has finished. What he left the it is he suspended it say what car? If there is any aspect of you that is not aligned to the principles of that kingdom, that's why the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? Seek also to be right with the laws of that kingdom. Then the things that the Gentiles seek will be added, not multiplied to you. You see what? If you want to make it multiply, that's when you will steal. Because I was there seeking God one day and God interrupted my prayer and said, your wife is ready. I didn't ask him for wife. But you see, as you seek and you are aligning with the laws of that kingdom that you stumble upon. All right? 
God is releasing grace upon you such that the resources that you need to fulfill your destiny will begin to navigate in your direction. Amen. That's the divine order. Christianity, Jesus is not a money doubler. He's not a God that gives men false hope. It's that teaching that has made Christianity look fraudulent. I know the God of which I speak. I know him. I've seen him before. I've seen Jesus face to face five times. The, the Jesus I preach is not the one I learned from Sunday school. And the truth is this. If you don't serve him today, you will, you will regret it. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your name or where you come from. He said those things will be added to you. Nobody here can successfully say that God, that you know, you can calculate, you know exactly how all the resources that you have used for this year has come into your hand. You cannot say that. Just like you cannot count how many shoes you have used from when you were born. Can you count it? How, how did it come? Because you had a way to come. And while you were growing up, were you also the one that put resources in place to ensure that you will not die at the age of 12? Many times when we, when we manifest faithlessness, God begins to wonder, did, you, did it occur to you that what I did before was the best I could do? We established it during the conference that for you to prosper materially and financially by righteousness, it takes time. It takes time. But you are sure of sustenance. God will be sustaining you. You see, the level of resources that comes to you is dependent on the assignment that God has for you. Not everybody will be a millionaire. Get it straight. Mm. That thing you will be that is that is is darkness. It's the angel of commerce that gives them such lyrics. We have to fight to redeem Christianity because false stars and darkness has overtaken it. The heritage of God that has been lost in the, in the land must be secured, and the recovery will begin with you. That fake Christianity you have been doing is one. If you are fake, don't say our nation is not going forward. You are part of the problem. Because if they put you in that office, you will, you, in fact, the office will not exist. <laughs> the office will become non-existent. Become non-existent. So we have fake Christians parading themselves around that do not have stature with God. That's why we are where we are. And if it's going to change, then a generation must decide to sustain a different perspective. Are you part of the recovery? Are you part of the people that God is looking out for to begin to renovate the landscape of Nigeria so that you can begin to re release missionaries to different parts of this continent in order to release his ability and potential? How can you explain the slavery of a land, a people that are so endowed, but yet there's no road in Nigeria? I don't know how you came to Otupo. Was it with helicopter? Especially our brethren that came from afar. Did you use helicopter? Because if you use the road I use, then that road, it, it means we need to do Thanksgiving service that you arrive here safely. <laughs> that, <laughs> that you came here safely, we need to stop this service and take your testimony. It's been long since I came here. Then when I, I said, okay, we'll come by car, come by car. We are just driving. And when I saw something, they call road. I knew we were living close to the place they say hell is. That's our address. I went to Oka. That is supposed to be the headquarters of what? Anambra State. In Oka, there are, there, there's no road in Oka. And it was NCCF conference. They had to come from all the local governments. I asked them, how did you come here? How? Because you were not supposed to arrive here safe. It, there was no plan for your safety. If that thing would change, then another generation would rise with a different philosophy. A, gen, a new breed without greed. We are honorable enough to work for what we get. 
We are wise enough to receive strategies as to what to do to prosper. Because if you want to prosper without doing something, you have, you have violated the principle of scripture. We have not taken advantage of the living God, the God that speaks. He can show you what to do to come out of this financial tight corner. We need to put his ability to, to work. But he's looking for genuine people that he can commit strange things to. He has been silent for a long time. Not because there's not so much abundance that he can bestow upon you. But he, people that have capacity to manage it, they have not yet showed up. Because you can bless somebody like this and then the person becomes a problem to the church. Himself. He, because of his, he's a small man in a big body. He has not been taken through the process so that he can have capacity enough to receive that which God wants to give. And that's why our land remains perpetually in gloom and in darkness. We seek the men that have the capacity to carry the grace of God. Sorry, I've been trying to read this, thing, this scripture since and it's not going. It's not going. It's not going. Maybe we'll borrow Pastor Christie's scripture. The one he used for Bible study. Psalms 24. You see, as I'm talking, scriptures are opening. Then he will not allow me to open it. Hallelujah. Akwai Bomb State doesn't have an airport. The governor built one. We have an airport. It's not working. <laughs> so if you are coming to Makodi, you fly to, to, from Lagos to Abuja, they enter New Nyanya. You think it's, it's, it's an economic problem? It's spiritual. Psalms 24. Let them not say the preacher came and insulted everybody and did not read scripture. So let's go back to Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That is land and survey, land registry. First of all, the Bible takes us to land and survey department. Where land titles, certificates, and ownerships are captured. So that in case of dispute, there will be a reference to look upon. So this is land registry. The earth is what? The laws. And the fullness what? You see, in the United States of America, their land law is different. If you buy a land and they stumble on oil in your land, the oil is yours, the land is yours. In fact, government will come and Pay royalty to drill it. But our own law is strange. And it's yours. But the content belongs to government. <laughs> Just in case something is there, it's not your own. But just in case maybe you are from France, Europe, and there's confusion, you are from Nigeria. The title did says what? The earth is the Lord's and his fullness. The world and them that dwell therein. Even the inhabitants that live off the land, they belong to God. And there is nothing that finds expression that has, that touches the land that does not derive its significance from God. Then, secondly, after land Ministry of Land and Survey, then he now moved to Ministry of Works. He now showed us the design pattern of the earth. That's the next verse. For he founded it upon the floods and established it upon the seas. The earth was created with a civil engineering floor. You know, if you want to construct a building, Amen. And there's, the, there's a part of the land that is waterlogged. It's always a problem to construction. What you do is to sand fill it. Amen. If you're an engineer here and I'm going wrong, you can strike the balance. 
you shan't feel it because uh, uh, floods are not compatible with building plans. But it happens to be that God himself, when he was constructing the engineering design for the construction of the earth, was that he founded it on water. That is why if you dig deeply into the soil, you will hit water. That's the foundation upon which the earth was established. And if you know building at all, you will know that that is a flaw in civil engineering. Indicative of the fact that God did not intend this existence to last forever. So he created a civil engineering flaw from the onset. Oh, you are not with me. You are not here. Mm. <laughs> There is a problem from the beginning. And he created it in the design that he chose for the earth. Because it was not his intention for the earth to be a continuing city. Founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Then after he had done this establishment, he now cries out to all and sundry who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord. The hill of the Lord is the only place found on earth where there is a true foundation. And he's inviting you. Who is it that we are it? Who is it that intends to ascend the mountain of God? Because if you have gone too far on earth, you must have seen that it's not reliable. There's no foundation. You must have been looking for a place that has foundation. And so he now gives you an invitation to the only place on the earth where there is a foundation where you can have a continuing city and then he throws out an invitation who shall ascend into the hill of god notice that abraham the bible says he was a sojourner he sought a city that had what foundations because he went to egypt and saw the economy of egypt and he knew that the way they were running things in egypt it could not last forever and he was looking for that place that had a foundation. He sought a city. He sought a land that God was his maker. God was his builder. A city that had foundations. If you like, steal all the money you want to steal from government. When you finish stealing it, you discover that you stole from your great-grandchildren. And you have signed up your generations to come to abject poverty. Even if they go to Mount of Fire, they'll come back more poor. Because the padlock. <laughs> Are you with me? Do anything you want to do. In your own little place. If you refuse to adopt the philosophy of the kingdom of heaven. You have just cheated yourself. You have opened the door to the devil to influence your life and to manipulate your destiny. And so it happens to be that... Uh, in this scripture, when he says, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? You'll be expecting that a, a roster will be summoned. Is the question not who? Oh, you're not with me again. Please don't allow yourself to drift. Amen? Okay, let's give you time to watch. I see you want to watch things. So. When you are back, come again. He said, who shall ascend to the hill of God? I was expecting that they would bring a register and say, Dr. Uchengine, Barista. That's what I expect, because it's who now. And then, instead of names, we have character traits. He that has what? And what? A pure heart. That has not lifted up his soul to vanity. That has not done anything for vain glory. You know, most of our fights is because you want to prove that I am something. That kind of a man doesn't have any need to contend to reach. Because his security is in Christ, not in things. Now, by the time we look at these things, this list here, you might find out that your name is not in the list. And until our name can come into that list, Nigeria cannot be free. He that has 
And what? A pure. That has not lifted his heart over, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and salvation. He shall receive blessing. Now, it's been long since I crammed it. Let me see if I'm still. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Now, I need to explain those two scriptures. What he will receive? A blessing and he will receive what? From the God of his salvation. Now, if, if you are a Bible student, what exactly is a blessing? Throughout the Old Testament, there is no definition of a blessing. It, the first time blessings were, developed, were defined was in Galatians. Because God promised Abraham, I will bless you. I will make thy name great. And indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. When we talk blessing, you need to set your compass to Abraham. God does not bless people. He blesses Abraham. Whether or not you benefit from it is how related you are to Abraham. That's all. That's the Bible. Are you with me? It, it took me a lot of scriptures to arrive at that. You understand? And we can't go into it. But that's just the template. You cannot be blessed outside of the covenant. The covenant is the only platform for people to be blessed. And the extent to which they can be blessed is whether they share in the common wealth of that covenant. That means they must be relatives of Abraham. There are two ways to be a relative of Abraham. One, biological, the children of Israel. And two, by his spiritual character, he had faith in God. In fact, that's how you even got saved. You had to exercise faith in God so that you became a relative of Abraham. And just in case you have not exercised faith in Jesus and his work, on the cross for salvation, you need help now. Are you, you get it? It's in the book of Galatians that the full definition of the covenant that Abraham caught with God was defined. And blessing was there for also defined. The Bible said that by faith, we have become Abraham's seed. And we now qualify to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So, God's perspective of blessing is that you have the promise of the Spirit, the reality of the Spirit operating in your life. Because when Jesus died, God was now ready to give everything he wanted to give to humanity. And he packaged it in a personality called what? The Holy Spirit. Oh my God. This is scripture. This is the perspective of the Bible. Anybody that does not have the Holy Spirit is not of Christ. And everything you need for life and godliness is packaged in the endowment, the enriching endowment of the personality of what? Now, let's go practical. This is theological. So, maybe it's looking... I don't know how you got, how you married though. Me, I was praying, God spoke the name of this lady to me. That's how I married. Maybe you went, they brought picture from the village and say, we have married this, maybe that's your own. Maybe that's why there's problem around. But me, I was in prayer, God spoke her name to me. Meanwhile, I was, I'm somebody that I don't want her tribe, but the name he spoke, and then when I investigated, it was that tribe, but, and there was nothing I could do. God conquered me because do you understand? That's where I got my own. God is saying that if you know how to interact with the Holy Spirit, what the frail needs of humanity will be met. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is more than human needs. It's the agency by which you can receive the spiritual blessings that God has blessed us with. So when, when he says you shall receive the blessing of the Lord, he's talking about the concentrated presence of God, actively working in somebody's life and delivering him from limitations and infirmity. There's always a sign to show that a genuine Christian is around. There's something that separates him from the crowd. <laughs> mm. 
Tell your neighbor, please don't be fake. Don't be afraid. Tell the person, please don't be fake. We have too many fake Christians. There's an there's a concentration of the presence of God that is actively around that person's life. An active concentration. So the person knows what to do and knows how to get it done. The person has spiritual capacity and can go into spiritual adventures and accomplish things. The person is not just rich, he's powerful. The person is not just provided for, he's impregnable. That's what happens when you price to keep your hands clean, to keep your heart pure, and not to lift your soul to vanity. And not to make vanity one of your pursuits. God ensures that there is a concentrated, activated presence of his spirit around your life to make your own life different from the life of the natural man. Secondly, the Bible also says that he will have righteousness from the God of his salvation. See, there is in in being right with God. When you obey the laws of God, what happens to you is that you become right with him. And the advantage of right standing with God is that you can ask God anything according to his will and he will do it. My question is this. You can evaluate how potent your Christian life is by how much results your prayers can produce. If your prayers cannot produce results, you, you are not known in heaven. Let me stop there because of the song. I would have loved to take us to evening, 4 p.m. By that time, your eyes will be shining. Because understanding your day, <laughs> the eyes of your understanding would have been enlightened. You see a man comes, and when he prays, that's when the person dies, finally. Because it was a taboo for such a man to be brought. He doesn't have stature before God. He's not in right standing with him. Meanwhile, somebody else can just say, he doesn't make the prayer vocal. He just utters it in his heart. And it angers right on it. That's a man of capacity. His hands are clean. He paid the price to make sure that the hands are clean. So that he can have right standing with God. And he can throw his weight, spiritual weight around. And create effect in his environment. That's a man of stature. Those are the kind of men that can ride the corridors of, of power, the corridors of influence in this nation, and make that corridor reflect Christ. See, we are tired of fake Christians. Our problem as a nation is linked to fake Christians that parade themselves around for the gods. And when you put them in the shop, we look for the horn of his God to hold. Because his God is money. If you pressurize him and there's lack around and there's problem around, his mind begins to take to places he should not go. That man has no God. He's just in a, he, he doesn't have a God. But a man that has a God doesn't have an option. Press him to the death. His testimony is one testimony. That's why God... See, the God of the Bible blesses people. He ble I mean material, not spiritually. He blesses people. During the time of the holiness movement, I was part of it. They never preached prosperity, but people genuinely prospered from God. It's the false Christianity that has made God powerless in our nation. But a generation will rise. Because the Bible, in this scripture, it said, this characteristics we have read now is the generation of them that seek thy face. It means that there's a generation that will come, that is forthcoming, that will subscribe to these principles. And when that generation comes, the gates will be lifted. That's what Psalm 24 is all about. The gates of nations will be lifted. The gates of territories will be lifted. The gates of parastatas, those gates, brazen gates, that have been fortified by your cultic wall, those gates will answer. When those people show up, it will be a new season will be initiated. Hallelujah. Our prayer is, is easy. It's simple. Help me not to be fake. You see, the truth is this. There are many things that try your heart. 
that bring you to that point of compromise. It will take a man that has cut covenant with God beyond his convenience to stand with him even when the situations are contrary. Righteousness will become popular again. Because if it doesn't become popular, then we are still in our sins as a nation. We will we'll be in corporate disfavor before God and our poverty will continue. Oh, you have not checked the clock. You want to have two children, three children at the most. But your Muslim counterpart wants to have ten. Hallelujah. You don't know the implication of that. The implication of that is that in 50 years time, your children will grow into a new world. An Islamic world. Because this civilization is going to end. If something drastic does not happen, Oh, you are not seeing the handwriting on the wall. You are not seeing. That's why you are at ease. Growing fat. You have not trained yourself in the way of prayer. There's two marandos. And until the finger of God comes down, the slavery will be intensified. You have not seen it. Without them lifting arms and guns. And the saving power of God is not active in a land where prayers have not been inculcated as a custom. What have you done with your years? Is it true that you have pleased God with your years? Or you are just living on freestyle, limbo? Your path is no longer popular. Because God seeks a generation of men that will seek his face. Can we receive grace from God to locate our God zone? That place that you, you, can, you always find God every day. May that place be fresh. May the pasture in that land never be dried up. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like us to begin our prayers. That God will help every one of us to find his God's own. There must be a place in your house that is your God's zone. That you run to when there's crisis. So that you can commune with God. If you have not found that place. You, you are actually experiencing a fatal loss. A fatal loss. Because we need Christians on the ground now. Real ones. Not fake babblers. Our nation is cursed above any other. Because darkness and satanic altars have been raised in different places. The name of the devil is revered. People fear the devil now. Because our disobedience has empowered him. But today... We want to tell God that that generation he was seeking for, that generation has come. Teach us the way of the Spirit. Cause us to love your presence. Cause us to love righteousness and to hate, hate wickedness. Can you pray? 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 Mama Laila Baba Sanda Bosa Mazaye Mama Rada Basaila Mama Rata Bala Boskema Mama Leda Maske La Bela Baba Maskaila Masalino Santo Mena Cabra Masaya Damante We need real people on the scene. And just in case you have been a fake Christian, fake, you can begin to repent. You can begin to repent this morning. You can begin to repent this morning. You can begin to repent this morning. We call upon your name, O Great One. We call upon your name, O God.
You are challenging us because you want to set our feet upon pedestals of grace. Let your words that have gone forth today be alive in the heart of everyone. Sao Barante Mastabela. Saila Marabaski, Fresca Banto Minacapri, Alaba Baranta Mascabra Ampe, Biros Efretama, Labra Macapeton Samande, Grace people that will represent you in the corridors of power, in government, in parastatus, public service, people that will represent you in business, in ministry, and you breed without greed. Men that have imbibed the way of righteousness. That have established themselves in poverty. Men with clean hands. Men with pure hearts. Men that have not lifted up their hearts unto vanity. We give you praise. Mera havraske ma, mambros e freske temboro kopateli ma kapre na kapatua. Mera havaski frasa namba. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. I'd like you to stand for one minute, just for one minute. Now, with all eyes in this place closed. It's time for our hearts to be tried by the Holy Spirit. And if you are here today and you just realize that you are a fake Christian, abnormal, subnormal, and you see that you, are, you have developed yourself with principles that are contrary to the principles of the kingdom of God, such that God cannot count upon you in the revolution that he seeks to bring. And it is your intention to change ground this morning. You want to enter into a living, vital relationship with God that is not religion. Something that will take your life along the corridors of the kingdom of God. That is your intention this morning. I'd like you boldly to put your right hand on your chest. You want to accept Jesus. You have been playing church and you have a Christian name. But yet, there's nothing actively happening around your life. And today, don't allow the devil win the argument. Nobody will. Nobody wants to see whether you are the one. No. It's a decision that you have to make before the presence of God. And this second year anniversary climax, we want to celebrate the souls of men that have been brought and gathered into the kingdom of God. People that have decided that we are that new breed without greed. And we want to imbibe principles and perspective of the kingdom of God. With your right hand on your chest, I'd like you to walk out of your seat and stand before this altar. Don't allow the devil win the argument. Just walk out with your hand on your chest. Stand here so that I can pray for you. Stand out of your seat and walk before the altar. Now, I need to, I need to tell you something. God says in his word that if you deny him before men, maybe because you felt that, oh, people will say, me too came. Friends, I assure you, you are not so much more than the breath that is in your nostril. Really. And uh, it happens to be that you are not the one that has retained it there. Don't allow the devil win the argument. If you are wise, you will know that that knock upon your heart will not last forever. I give you a chance to join them.
There are still a few people that God needs to catch. Don't allow that trouble, that struggle to die out. Because today is the day of salvation. The Bible says when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. 